Harold Camping is going to be proved wrong on May 23, 2011. He will no longer be a prophetic problem. But Christians who argue for a soon return of Jesus are an ongoing problem. My name is Gary DeMar and this is Vantage Point. As you've been hearing for the last uh, year or so, Harold Camping uh, has been predicting that Jesus is going to return uh, May 21st, uh, 2011. Well, he's going to be proved wrong. I'm doing this on Friday, right before uh, this uh, so-called prediction. And uh, hopefully we won't hear from Harold Camping again, but I guess if history proves anything, it proves that uh, prophecy speculators are always around trying to push another book or another idea. In 1994, uh, Harold Camping predicted that 1994 was going to be the end. The bigger problem, I think, is with Christians who continue to, to demonstrate that certain, or try to demonstrate that certain things going on in the world right now are, are pure indicators that the end is near. One of them, of course, is Israel becoming a nation again in 1948. For some reason, a lot of these people believe that the Bible makes a big deal about Israel becoming a nation again. Well, if the Bible makes such a big deal about it, the question is, why doesn't the New Testament say anything about Israel becoming a nation again? There's not a single verse in the New Testament that says anything about it. Jesus doesn't say anything about it. I know, I know the fig tree illustration in Matthew chapter 24. They say that's Israel becoming a nation again. It always amazes me. You go through Matthew 24 and you have all these specifics. You have wars and rumors of wars. You have famines. You have earthquakes. You have persecution, the gospel being preached in the whole world. You have a tribulation period. People on the rooftop flee. You know, flee. Hope, hopefully it doesn't take place in winter. All these very specific things. But when you get to the key thing, that is um, Israel becoming a nation again, you get a fig tree illustration. Now, if Jesus wanted to say that Israel becoming a nation again was prophetic, prophetically significant, it seems to me because of all the particulars he gives throughout the chapter that he would have stated that. Um, uh, the, the fig tree illustration has nothing to do with Israel becoming a nation again. Even modern day dispensationalists make the same claim. They, they have finally come to the realization that the fig tree illustration has nothing to do with Israel becoming a nation again. John Walver doesn't support the idea. Mark Hitchcock doesn't support the idea. Even Tim LaHaye's Prophecy Study Bible doesn't, doesn't support the idea that the fig tree in Matthew chapter 24 has anything to do with Israel becoming a nation again. So Israel, 1948, nothing to do with Bible prophecy. In fact, Hal Lindsey tried to make this, use this as a case maker for his position. He said Israel becoming a nation again was prophetically significant. He went to Matthew chapter 24, verse 34. He says, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Generation is 40 years. Took 40 years, added it to 1948, got 1988. This generation is running out of time. And earlier than that, you had those who went all the way back to 1917, I believe, and said that was the generation. That was the start of the generation. Uh, that was Henry Morris that, who, who did that. He says the generation that would see World War, that saw World War I. Well, that generation has died off. So I believe that so-called orthodox prophetic speculators are a bigger problem than Harold Camping. Harold Camping will, will be wrong when, when May 23rd comes, since he has predicted that these events are supposed to take place May 21st and 22nd. May 23rd, that's the end of it. We've got these ongoing prophetic speculators out there who say certain things need to be uh, fulfilled yet. The gospel has to be preached in the whole world, and then the end will come. And since that hasn't taken place yet, well, then we are still living in this last days period. Of course, er earthquakes and famines, as we know, earthquakes... Uh, uh, in, in Jesus' day were in fact common. At the time of his crucifixion, there was a great earthquake. We know that in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 16, there was a great earthquake that opened up the prison that released Paul from prison. Uh, th these were common occurrences in those days. Famines. Uh, Matthew 24 mentions famines. Well, Acts chapter 11 mentions a famine that was all over the Roman Empire. But one of the things that a lot of these, these present end time speculators who are critical of Harold Camping and critical of date setting point to is Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, where it says this gospel, the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world to all the nations and then the end will come. Let's look at this for a moment. The end that's being spoken, uh, spoken about there isn't the end of the world, it's the end of the age. 
And Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 says, the ends of the ages have come upon us. The ends of the ages has to do with the old covenant order, which in fact was passing away. Jesus came, came as the, the new temple, as the animal sacrifices. He was a priest after the order of Melchizedek. He was the embodiment of the new covenant. Uh, he, was, he was the redemptive significance of everything the Old Testament was all about. That's why when you get to Luke chapter 24, you find Jesus going through the entire Old Testament and showing how the Old Testament, in fact, was, a, was one huge prophecy about him. He was the fulfillment of all these things. So everything that Matthew 24 is, is describing there has to do with that particular end. Not an end in our future, but an end in the future of Jesus' present audience. Now, had the gospel in fact been preached in the whole world before that particular generation passed away? Well, yes, it had. Uh, how do we know this? Because the Bible says it, it, it had been preached in the whole world. The whole world is in fact the same word that's used in that Luke 11 passage about the famine. It's oikumene. It means the inhabited earth or the political boundaries. It's the same Greek word that's used in Luke chapter 2 verse 1 where it says that a, Caesar, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world be, be taxed. Oikumene is used. That is synonymous with the Roman Empire. Rome didn't tax anything beyond the Roman Empire. Uh, Rome only taxed what was in the purview of its own jurisdiction within its own empire. Jesus uses the same word in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, oikumene. And it's the only time, the only time that, that uh, Matthew uses that word. So it's very significant. If your translation says world, it's an improper translation. There's a perfectly good word, a Greek word for world, and it's cosmos. Uh, the, but the Greek word that's used there is oikumene. Now, was the gospel preached throughout the entire oikumene before that generation passed away? Most assuredly it was. Uh, the Apostle Paul says in, in 1 Corinthians, no, not 1 Corinthians, but in Colossians chapter 1, verse 6, and Colossians uh, chapter 1, verse 23. In fact, in, in verse 23 of Colossians 1, uh, Paul states very clearly that the gospel has been preached to every creature under heaven. Now, that's obviously hyperbole, but what he meant by that was, by in his day, the gospel message had been preached throughout the entire oikumeni, throughout the entire Roman Empire. You read the end of, of Romans, Romans chapter 16. He even states it had been preached to all the nations. And that's a phrase that's interesting. Look in the Old Testament to see how the phrase all the nations is used. It doesn't mean every nation in the world in our day, but it meant all the nations that they were familiar with in their day. In fact, uh, David says that all the nations have surrounded me. Um, Nebuchadnezzar talks about how he has been the king of all the nations. Cyrus the same way. Let the Bible interpret itself. Uh, and you, it, you, you'll find in 1 Timothy chapter 3 how the gospel had in fact been preached throughout the, throughout the world. And so modern day prophecy speculators uh, who will not take a date like Harold Camping did, uh, won't be specific about it, and won't pick a particular year. They are constantly drubbing this idea that you know, Jesus is coming soon, all the signs are lined up, uh, while we don't know the day and the hour, we know that his, it's coming soon. We got all, everything that's happening in the Middle East right now and the earthquakes and the famines, although there aren't that many famines these days, but earthquakes and wars and rumors of wars, uh, this, these are all indications that it's the end. These guys ha always have the, the church on the precipice of some great eschatological event. And so when they, they see a prophetic inevitability out there, they can't do anything to change anything. If there's peace in the Middle East, that's a sign of the end. If there's war in the Middle East, that's the sign of the end. This, this to me is much worse than Harold Camping. Harold Camping will go away May 23rd, that will be the end of him. What, we, what won't go away, however, is, is uh, prophetic speculators out there who continue to write these books telling us that Jesus is coming soon, all of the events are lined up, uh, up for it, uh, it'll, it'll put Christians in a defensive, passive mode. They won't take action uh, when the things that are going on in our world because they believe uh, that there's nothing they can do to change anything. So beware of false prophets. Not only those who point out specific days uh, for their prophetic end, but for those who continue to write books telling you Jesus is coming soon, all the signs are lined up, uh, there's nothing that we can do about it, there's nothing that, uh, that we can do other than 
preach the gospel and get the world ready for the rapture. Uh, to me, this is much, much worse than Harold Camping. Now, some of you just heard this might be pretty ticked off at me for making these types of statements. Well, I'm going to make a challenge to you. Uh, American Vision is holding a prophecy conference June 1st through the 4th in Asheville, North Carolina at the Ridgecrest Conference Center. Come to the conference, whether you agree with me or not. You're going to hear some of the finest teaching on Bible prophecy that you've ever heard. It will challenge you. I've had a number of people tell me uh, that after listening to me and reading some of my things that they say, I've never thought about these things in this way before. I can assure you when you come there, you will learn things about the Bible you've never known before and you will become a better student of the Bible. If you want to take pot shots at me, this is the perfect time to do that and the other speakers. There'll be plenty of time for questions, there'll be times for getting together afterwards in small group discussions. Uh, so it's June 1st through the 4th, Asheville, North Carolina, Ridgecrest Conference Center. Go to AmericanVision.org for information, click on the banner. Uh, get all the information there. If you have questions about it, you can call 1-800-628-9460, 1-800-628-9460. Uh, June 1st through the 4th, Asheville, North Carolina, Ridgecrest Conference Center.